You've probably already heard all of this before, but I'm just gonna say it again. Your thumbnail might be the most important, if not one of the most important things when creating your YouTube video. The key to getting someone to actually click on your video is your thumbnail. You want to put in the effort in your thumbnail that you are putting in your video. Definitely not as much time, but as much intention. Your video could literally be the most amazing masterpiece, but if your thumbnail is not good enough to get people to actually click on your video, then nobody is going to know. I'll walk you through all of those steps in my process of how I come up with my thumbnails. So let's just get into it. I just want to share a few tips with you guys before we actually get into the editing part to keep in mind even before you sit down at your computer and get to creating your thumbnail. The first thing is that you want to plan ahead and keep your thumbnail in mind as you're shooting your video. Try to take photos while you're also filming your video. In my videos where I show kind of like the foods that I'm making, the activities that I'm doing, I always try to capture those because I know I'm filming them which means that they're part of my video and I might want to represent them in my thumbnail. Taking the time to actually take photos of the things you're doing throughout that vlog or that video is a good idea. I think it's better than trying to take screenshots from your footage. They won't be as good of quality. The framing and the composition of the photo is not going to be as well thought out. Sometimes let's say that you forgot to actually take the time to take photos while you were filming or you're not happy with those photos. I think it's worth taking that extra chunk of time to go outside or inside and do whatever it is that you were doing in that video and capture photos that are thought out specifically. You don't want to half-ass your thumbnail. You really don't want to. Please don't half-ass your thumbnails. You are missing out. If your thumbnails are not nice, crisp, it's not getting the viewership that you want it to. You want to figure out what your style of thumbnail is. It kind of took me a little bit of time to get to how my thumbnails are now and they'll probably change over time. I always want to have some sort of bright element into my thumbnail because I think it attracts the eye a lot more. I also like a little bit of a busy look. I don't like it when it's just very simple. Depending on what's happening in the video, I think sometimes less is more and sometimes more is actually also more. Sometimes do a little bit of research and see what everybody else is doing, how many people are actually clicking on a thumbnail and then look at what's special about that thumbnail. What is that thumbnail doing well? So for this video, I want to recreate one of my thumbnails that I've already made on one of my previous videos. First, I just wanna say that my process might seem excessive. I use three Adobe programs. I use Adobe Lightroom as well as Photoshop and Illustrator. That's because I actually took some graphic graphic design classes. I know how to use the programs. I have all of my videos just independently in little files. I have my thumbnail video here that's specifically for this video. These are the photos that I will use to recreate that thumbnail. In here, I have photos of myself that I took actually on the same day. We also went and played tennis, so we have these two photos that we're working with. So here, I go to File, Add Photos, select all of them and then import. Kind of just like toggle around and see if I like the change or not. So this is the one we're gonna go with. And then the photos of myself here, didn't edit them at all. Kind of just brought up the highlights and then lowered the shadows a little bit. But I also like to work with the tone curve just because sometimes it manipulates the lighting and everything a little bit differently. For each video, I have a folder that says specifically just thumbnail and that's where I work with my thumbnail. So now we edited our photos and we're gonna go into Photoshop, 1280 by 720, 300 pixels per inch. And basically what I'm trying to do is just cut out the background of this photo so that it, then I can add it on top of my thumbnail and it's just by itself as a little plate. Quick selection tool. And basically what you're gonna try to do, just select the entire area right here. And then you go to the right side of the screen, right down here in layers. And you wanna click this, that kind of looks like a camera, but it's not really a camera. You wanna click on that. And that basically has deleted the background. And then you go here and it takes all the background off and when you see that there's these squares on the sides it means that it has become by itself there's no background at all but as you can see the red has cut off here and it's just like not uniform 
and what you can do is actually go up here and go select subject and that kind of automatically selects the subject the computer thinks that you want it to um, sometimes this works really well but if it's a more specific area that you want to isolate in a photo then you're gonna have to manually actually do it how i showed you in the beginning now that we have all the circle uh, the entire plate selected i'm gonna go down here click on my isolation tool and then as you can see the red is actually very well isolated on all sides i'm going to just hide the background and that way all we have is our our plate and it's basically done and now we're going to go to file export and then just do quick export as PNG that's basically what I'm gonna do with my pancakes as well and after we do that on Photoshop go into our final application Adobe Illustrator and this is where we're actually gonna put the whole thumbnail together you're gonna go to create new and then make sure you have 1280 pixels by 720 there's our thumbnail basically so now we're just gonna fill it with our photos what i like to do is just go to finder and then just drag my photos in like this all this talking is uh, making my throat dry in adobe illustrator in order for you to resize your photos you want to do that by pressing shift and keeping shift pressed and then you resize it however you want so i'm gonna just press shift make it smaller and bring it into the end here i'm gonna do the same thing press shift i don't want to just see me you don't want to see like the stuff on the side so i'm gonna actually make it bigger and you want to go crop image and then it's basically gonna make this little square situation and you kind of want to just drag it and then bring it to the actual black lines you see on the side and again when you're making your thumbnails a big part of it is going to be kind of like trial and error and seeing like what you like what you don't like also a shortcut for let's say as you can see right here this photo is on top of these other two what you do to make it go basically underneath is you go to object and then arrange and then you bring forward or backward or all the way back what we're gonna do is we're actually going to lock all of them you can start writing the text on the thumbnail without any of our other elements moving around the page so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just click and select all of them you can see they're all highlighted and i'm just going to go to object and then lock and then selection if i want to click on them none of them can move because they've basically just locked them onto the screen so we're going to go to the text or the type tool on the side here delete random stuff that comes up to make this about a hundred that's usually what i start with because it's a big size and then lemon milk is one of my favorites and i just use the medium and i'm just gonna write here a few days in my life keep in mind is that your thumbnail is not always huge it's mostly much smaller than you see it when you're editing it on the computer or on your phone so you want to keep that in mind of how readable is it to achieve this squiggly little situation that i do i go here to my pen tool i'm gonna to go to stroke on the right side and i'm gonna make it white so you guys can see it i'm gonna make it pretty thick so that you can see what i'm doing all right, so I'm gonna click here, and then I'm gonna click here, and here. And I kind of just play around with this and I do it pretty randomly. So this is our shape for now. And I know you're probably like, what is she doing? Well, after we do this, you're gonna go back to the left on the pen tool. You're gonna click it for an extra few seconds and you're gonna see that this whole menu jumps out. We're gonna go to anchor point tool. You're going to left click and then you're going to drag it until it becomes round like this. And then you can kind of play around with it and that way it creates these curvatures. And that's how I get, you know, the squiggly, the squiggly shapes to get the faded white under it because that's basically the point i want to make the actual writing stand out so i'm going to create a background to it it says fill and click white after that i'm going to go to opacity and turn down the opacity so that way you're going to start seeing the writing and as you can see this squiggly situation is in front of the writing so to get it behind the writing you go to object arrange and then you would go to bring backward that way it goes behind the writing make the actual stroke which means the outline of what we just made in black i want the black 
outline to stand out while the white background has that same opacity. So what I would do is I would go click on the little squiggly thing. I need to find a name for it, but anyways, the squiggly thing. And then I would go command copy and command V. And then you're just gonna have a clone of what you just made. And then you're gonna go to fill. So you're gonna delete the fill right there and stroke stays the same, bring the opacity all the way up. Now that we have all of this, the last thing that I'm going to do is create that outline of myself and the two plates. So what I'm gonna do first is select my photo and then again, go to object lock selection. So that way the photo can't move anywhere if I click on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the exact same tool that we used to make the squiggly outline, except I'm gonna outline myself. We're gonna go to the pen tool right here and I'm going to change it so there's no fill. There's a white stroke of maybe like three points. We're just going to start selecting my body and then just outlining it as accurately as possible. You also wanna remember that like, again, this is gonna be smaller than you see it on your screen. So if it's not perfectly outlined, it's not the end of the world. You don't wanna be here forever, okay? You don't want your thumbnail to take as long as it took you to actually edit your video, right? Uh, if you have an iPad or a tablet, you can do this in a much more efficient way where you just actually trace it on the photo and that way it's much easier to do that. I don't have any of those things. I'm working and hopefully we'll get one. I just need to save some money for it. Once I have that, and if you do have one of those, you can easily recreate what I'm doing right now in a much more efficient way. Try to just make everything rounder. And again, you don't, you don't need to be perfect. And the reason why people do this is because it actually isolates me in that photo much better. And if you took this away, you can see the difference, right? You can still see me, but I feel like it, you don't see me as well as you would if I was outlined. So that basically sums up the way that I think about my thumbnails, plan out my thumbnails, and create my thumbnails and put them all together, how I design them and edit them and the tools that I'm using. I know it might seem like a little bit excessive. I know a lot of other people use much simpler technology and programs. This is just what I use and that's how I achieve my thumbnails. But I hope it was helpful. Honestly, what I want you to take away from this video is that remember your video is like a book and the thumbnail is the cover of the book and you want to put intention into the cover of your book or the thumbnail of your video. That way you'll get someone to click on your video because if you put all of this effort into your video and then nobody clicks on it because the thumbnail is kind of meh, you've done yourself a disservice. So putting in that little extra effort into your thumbnail is gonna make huge difference. Happy thumbnailing, happy designing, happy filming, and happy creating. See you guys next time.